Hey guys, today I thought we'd focus on open source operating systems. So we're going to focus on an operating system called Zorin OS. Now Zorin OS is a distribution of Linux customized to look a lot like Windows 7. Now this is quite handy for people because Windows 7 isn't free, Windows 8 isn't free, Windows 10 isn't free, whereas Zorin OS is free and it has the full functionality of Windows in general. So we're going to go ahead and explore this in detail and show you just what I mean by that. So let's go ahead and go to the website. And if you just type in Zorin OS, uh, they're on version 10, I believe. So go to download here. Oh no, we're on 11, so version 11. And uh, we want the core rather than light, but if you want a smaller OS, you can go for the light, come down and download the 64-bit ISO. And when that's done, we'll go from there. So now the download has finished, I'll go to downloads here and there it is here. Let's bring that out to the desktop so we know where it is. And we're going to use Hyper-V. So let's go to Hyper-V, we're going to do a new virtual machine and we're going to explore Zorin OS to see what it's actually capable of. I'm going to call it Zorin OS Generation 1. I'm going to give it three gig of RAM, connect my external switch so it has internet access, and give it 60 gig, we're going to install an ISO, there it is, select that, and next, and finish, okay, so once we've created this new virtual machine we're going to go ahead and go to the settings, and give it all eight cores of this eight core i7 processor. So it's obviously using all of the power of the machine as shown here. It's overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz, 16 gig of RAM. And we're on a Samsung 840 or 850, I can't quite remember off the top of my head. Pro SSD, 850 Pro, 512 gig SSD. So let's go ahead and start this virtual machine up. We're going to minimize this down for the manager and you'll see the OS booting up. Okay, so this is actually a fully functional operating system that you can use, install on any computer, PC, laptop, tablet and use it just like Windows. It looks like Windows 7. It has all the functionality of Windows 7. So we're going to install Zorin. I'll change the resolution of this once we're actually in the operating system itself. So we connect to the internet, we have at least 3 gig of hard drive space free, continue. We're going to erase the disk and install Zorin. Continue, it tells you that it's going to erase that virtual hard drive. Selecting our location, English UK. Your name, I'm going to call it Jake. I'm going to call it JB Zorin. Username Jake, password 1234. 1234. Require my password to log in. Click continue. And there we go. So it's a waiting game from here. We're going to let this install. It shouldn't take more than 5 to 10 minutes on an SSD. And even on a standard hard drive, it shouldn't take more than about 15 minutes. While that's doing that, let's have a little talk about the other versions of Linux out there, the other distributions. So the, the, the key and core kind of releases that you can download and use are Kubuntu. So Kubuntu, as you can see here, 15.10. Ooh, Willy Werewolf. <laughs> so under the downloads, you can obviously download 15.10, the latest release. That's another distribution of Linux, which is exactly kind of the same as uh, Zorin. It has the same sort of functionality, but just a different kind of user experience. It looks different, uh, user interface. The other one would be Ubuntu, which is probably the most common. I was fucking spell Ubuntu. Ubuntu.com. So you want the download button. Desktop. 15.10 again. It's all the same, you see. You've got... Linux Mint as well, which is another real popular one. And that's very similar as well. You want the Cinnamon release, 64-bit. And that is the Rosa release. 
So any of those additions would do you just fine. But for now, like I said, we're, good. we're just focusing on the Zorin release, just because it looks just like Windows 7. It has a great user interface that actually a lot of users would find very simple to use. And it's a great alternative that's free to Windows or Mac OS. So you can see it there installing modules and the hardware, the drivers that it will need to use to set this thing up properly. In the screenshots there, you can actually see that you can use LibreOffice, which I will show you as an alternative to um, Office for Windows or Office for Mac. And we're nearly done. You can see how quickly this operating system actually installs. It's very, very fast. All right, and here you go. So the installation is complete. You need to restart your computer to use this installation. Restart now. And this is an incredibly well-optimized operating system. It boots up very quickly indeed. Okay, so I just want to make sure that the media has been disconnected. So yeah, as you can see there, it's removed the ISO for us. So that's, we'll probably have to reset it in Hyper-V. So actions reset. Yes, reset. You'll see it booting up here now. Here we go. It's very quick. And that's it done. That's it booted up. That was what, two seconds at most? One or two seconds? So one, two, three, four. We'll log in. I'll just change the resolution of this VM. Okay, so now we're in Zorin OS, we can see the screen correctly. This is the desktop. As you can see, it has a taskbar along the bottom here, very similar to Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10 as well. You have a power button, the clock, and the calendar, notification center, audio, etc. Uh, language and uh, locale settings as well. The start menu, very, very similar to Windows 7. You can see that there, you've got your system settings, which is a bit like Mac OS system preferences, pops up there. So you can get to most of your common settings from that. Obviously, when you go to your power button, you can reset, reboot, sleep, whatever you need to, help, connect to server, network, computer, my documents, the home folders are all there, the same in Windows. Okay, so pretty similar so far. Let's say you wanted to install an application or use Google Chrome, for instance. Let's go to the software center. Let's go ahead and click on the search bar up here. Let's go to Chromium, because on Linux it's called Chromium. There it is. Install. Okay, simple as that. So once we've click it, clicked install, it'll ask you for your password, a bit like Mac OS does as well. One, two, three, four. And uh, we just wait now. You can see a little progress bar up here. It goes across slowly. Once that's done, we can obviously launch Chrome. Simple as that, that's it, that's it done installed. So you can close down the soft, software center. If we go to the start menu, search for Chrome IAM. There it is at the top, you can see that. I'm gonna open that now. There you go, set as default. This is Google Chrome, so bbc.co.uk. Straight to BBC, you see how fast that was, brilliant. So that's obviously great so far. Mozilla Firefox is included free of charge. There you go. Look at that. So we can go to, again, bbc.credit.uk. Excellent. So they're the two browsers that you could use straight off the bat without any issues whatsoever. You could even access your web mail from that if you were concerned from a business point of view. Obviously, you have a mail client built in here, which you can configure to your Office 365 account if you need to, or Gmail, Yahoo, other, depending on whatever you want to use which is brilliant as well. Your Windows Explorer icon here, so it opens the home folder, a bit like on a Mac as well. So as you can see, documents, downloads, music, pictures, videos, etc. Absolutely brilliant. If you want to go to the network, you can go to network. You can look at your network shares. So if you're backing up to a NAS box each day or working from a NAS, like in business, you often do. Let's go to JB Corsair, which is my system, the host that's running this virtual machine. It'll ask me to authenticate with my computer. On the desktop here, I have a folder called Jake. If we look at the properties of that, under sharing, advanced sharing, the folder for share this folder is ticked. The button for share this folder is ticked. The share name is Jake. The permissions are that everyone has read. Jake Billing has full control. Okay on that, okay on that, okay on that. So if I authenticate here with 
JB hyphen Corsair backslash Jake work group and then the password for my the host the PC running this system click connect it should let us see the default shares for all the hard drives that are in my system there's the Jake share on the desktop and there's three commonly used files in there we've got a photo a video and we have a word document okay so let's drag those over to the desktop okay so everyone says to me oh no but on Linux you can't use word what if I get sent an email with an attachment and I can't reply to it or edit it well you can so let's open LibreOffice 5 that's built into Linux all Linux distributions let's go ahead and add to that so let's add test hello world okay let's go to the top file save okay all formats here the standard are ODF for Linux but if you scroll down you've got a dot doc format there and if you keep going further down you have the latest dot doc X which all formats can read so if we go to the standard one just for now click the save button yeah replace one on the desktop because we're saving as yep yeah, save we know yes we're replacing it yes use the office format that we've selected okay close down as you can see if we open that up again it is edited and saved now that can be viewed on any windows computer or mac with office installed or open office brilliant what about photos then so i've got a photo here simple as that just open straight away this is the x max from a previous youtube video you've probably seen some of them in the past you can see that that works fine you can view them from there what about videos well i've got the riding the network video right here now you guys have been looking for this for ages well i had to remove it unfortunately but it's back now i actually have it here and here it is running within linux now to me that is eyesight smooth it may not be on the video because obviously recording at a lower frame rate for uh, cam studio to record but you can see that that is running fine i can see it's running fine and that's that so i think it's um it's time for people to go out there and try and experiment with these different operating systems just because you know they're free they're open source you know, you don't necessarily need to use Windows or Mac these days to, to do what you need to do on computers. You know, yes, there's a standard on uh, in IT for business, and obviously that is Office 365, you know, to be able to communicate and, and, and to obviously earn money ultimately. And you can do that through other operating systems other than Windows and Mac. You know, this operating system is not the best. It's not the worst. It's just a really good experience in my opinion. Let's have a little reboot and you'll see what I mean. If we do a restart of this system, so if we do a power, in fact, cancel that. If I come down to the, the, the reboot button here, okay, so restart. I'm going to count how long it takes to do this. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten seconds. I'll say that's roughly ten seconds. All right. It helps if I type a password in, right? That would help. One, two, three, four. One, two two seconds it's logged in i mean mac is quick windows is quick but that is faster in my opinion than anything i've used from the windows of mac world and there you go the cool thing about linux as well is it's open source it's added to by a huge kind of community of people and developers designers and it's always updating so to update zorin or linux in general just go to your little power button here about this computer you'll see at the bottom it says checking for updates and you can click the install button now what tends to happen is it will check again and it will say you know if it's found any it'll do them and if not then it'll let you click install now and that's it you basically restart your machine and your system's up to date just like on windows or mac os it's as simple as that so i hope you like this video guys i hope it sort of gave you an insight as to you know experiment with other operating systems because it's a brilliant bit of kit this i really enjoy using zorin i mean obviously there's ubuntu kubuntu linux mint as well the, the, the other three that are really very popular right now they always have been um so this isn't obviously the best or the worst version like i said but it's worth having a go with so i hope you like the video guys thanks for watching i'm jake billing i'll catch you next time see you later bye